Now we're going to talk about mood disorders. They're basically extreme disturbances in the emotional state, our affect. Uh, there are two forms. The first is major depressive disorder, where a person is really seriously depressed. And the second is an interesting one called bipolar disorder. It used to be called manic depressive disorder, where you have rapid shifts in these extreme emotional states from deep depression to mania, being very up and being very down. So that's bipolar disorder. Now, major depression is experienced by quite, quite often by about 17% of the United States adults, about 12% of Canadians have major depression at least some point in their life. Sometimes that's uh, reactive, that is, it's because of a major loss or a major event, but often it cannot be attributed to this kind of event. If you have mild depression, it's called dysthymia, and that's mild depression, but here we're talking about serious deep depression. It's the number one reason that people seek mental health services, and it's due to hopelessness, despair, guilt, the loss of the interest in everyday activities, and so it really does interfere with your everyday functioning. Now the DSM-4 says that you must experience five or more of the following things to be really called major depression. This is also in DSM-5. You have to have depressed mood most of the day. You have to have diminished interest in other activities and doing things socially. You have to have significant weight loss or significant gain. You have to have insomnia or you're sleeping too much, sleeping too little or sleeping too much, some kind of sleep disturbance. You have to have physical agitation or lethargy, just feeling like you just don't want to do anything. You have fatigue or loss of energy. You feel worthless and you have daily problems with cognition. In fact, as you know, I do aging research, and if an older person comes to me uh, concerned about their memory, most often that complaint about memory is really due to depression. And then you have recurrent thoughts of death or suicide. Now, if you experience five or more of these ailments, then you're categorized with major depression. As you can see, Females experience major depression a lot more than males. In all these countries, the female prevalence of uh, major depression is more than males. Now, this is an example. A 2009 Gallup poll surveyed one quarter million Americans and asked the question, have you ever been diagnosed with depression? Have you ever been diagnosed with depression? 13% of men said yes and 22% of women said yes. Almost one quarter of the women said yes. It varies with gender. It also varies significantly with socioeconomic status. The lower your socioeconomic status, the greater probability of prevalence of depression. The higher the econo social economic status, less. So it varies with these demographic variables, gender and SES. Major depression, fortunately, usually self-terminates. After a period of time of having major depression, it, re it releases. And this is regardless of whether you have therapy or whether you're taking antidepressant drugs. Um, Curry and his associates found that it, it's, not a, it's not a, for most people, it's not a permanent kind of ailment. In fact, only 20% are chronic. That is where you don't have this release after some period of time. 20% are chronic. And depression usually occurs and ends in a few weeks or months where you have this major depressive uh, period of time. Half of the people that experience one of these depressive episodes will have it recur. So for half, depressive episode is the event and it doesn't recur. Half of people, 50%, will have recurrence. Now let's talk about bipolar disorder, this rapid change between mania and depression. Uh, what I mean by mania, this period of euphoria, of elated mood, of inability to sleep, extreme talkiness, I just talk all the time, extreme agitation. This is the mania state. It's very rare. Less than 1% of people that have depression also have these manic episodes. So bipolar disorder is not something as common as we saw 
in major depressive disorder. Uh, it's interesting that even though major depression has these gender and demographic variances, uh, bipolar disorder does not. It affects men and women about the same. It affects people in different socioeconomic status about the same, unlike the major depressive disorder. It has also a stronger heritability than major depression. That is, if we look at, for example, monozygotic and dizygotic twins, this comparison looking at behavior genetics, Gottesman did this, we see that if one twin, had, if, if you're monozygotic and one twin has bipolar disorder, there's a 72% concordance that the other twin will have it. With excuse me, dizygotic twins, where you have uh, not identical genetic, but only 50% genetic overlap, only 17% of the other twin. Even though we, we're looking at twins that live together and twins that live apart, doesn't make any difference. With major depression, you only have a 40% concordance ratio compared to 11% in dizygotic twins. So the heritability here is pretty significant with bipolar disorder. Now, in bipolar disorder, you can have the, the status of the mania can vary a great deal. You can have mild mania, where the person, in fact, with mild mania, the person is very productive, they're more creative, they're actually functioning better than they are when they don't have their state. But if you have hypermania, this extreme mania, the person can be dangerous, wild spending habits, uh, typically needs to be hospitalized and treated in an institution. So great variance in the degree of mania that's experienced in the bipolar disorder. Now, what causes this? Well, one of the hypotheses that's pretty strong is the norepinephrine hypothesis, because you know that norepinephrine is decreased during depression and increased during mania. We would actually look to see how much norepinephrine is in the system. The most effective therapy for bipolar disorder is bi biochemical, it's lithium, which decreases norepinephrine and reduces the mania. And the most common treatment for major depression is monoxine oxidase. We talked about that earlier. It inhibits those, that enzyme, which actually, uh, the enzyme would normally decrease norepinephrine, take care of the excess norepinephrine at the synapse. With this enzyme, though, the MAO inhibitor, you have increased norepinephrine because it's not capturing that. So we increase norepinephrine if we want to treat depression, and we decrease norepinephrine if we want to treat bipolar disorder. Psychological factors, in addition to the biological factors that we talked about, genetics and norepinephrine, will learn helplessness is one of the constructs that we talked about in the last video, which is very important for uh, psychological cause of mood disorders. And then there's also Beck's cognitive theory. Aaron Beck said that there were these automatic negative thoughts about themselves, about the environment, about the future. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm lousy, the world's lousy, and nothing's gonna happen in the future that makes me, will make me feel any better. But these negative thoughts that really are very prevalent in mood disorders. And then there are also cognitive distortions. You can take one detail and then overgeneralize that detail to make one depressed. For example, you might have an evaluation of me at work, and everything is positive, and it has one little comment. It might be good if you did X. And that comment then will be overgeneralized. I'll select that one negative comment and overgeneralize it, making uh, a problem with my depression. Thank you.